If you have not heard of site reliability engineering already, this year you're sure to hear about site reliability a lot because there's a you know there's a growing uh, trend uh, of people who are doing DevOps and implementing it uh, to be called as site reliability engineering. If you want to know the difference between the site reliability engineer and the DevOps engineer, definitely watch this video till the end, right? Now, the concept of site reliability engineering actually started even before DevOps came into picture. Uh, back in 2003 was when site reliability engineering was a team that was formed at Google and it was mainly for you know managing the Google's production infrastructure by the way 2003 was the, the time when Google started moving their workloads to containers they created their own uh, you know uh, infrastructure container management orchestration system called as Borg and uh, to manage this production large-scale infrastructure they formed a team called as site reliability engineers it was a combination of people who knew about operations and uh, some of the developers who took an engineering approach towards site reliability now what is the difference between site reliability and DevOps because you know you um, it may appear that site reliability engineering and DevOps engineering is pr pretty much same even the positions look quite similar but here are the differences and here are the commonalities between uh, these two positions right talking about the commonalities first um, you know both site reliability engineers and DevOps engineers share a lot of principles and practices actually they rely on automation heavily for example uh, they you know they take an engineering approach because it's a devops engineering or a site reliability engineering uh, they take an engineering approach towards managing the operations what does that mean uh, i'll probably create another video talking about what is the engineering approach uh, towards operations basically um, so it's all about um, making sure that you instead of doing everything manually uh, when there's a problem you analyze it you uh, try to fix it by applying engineering principles uh, automating stuff and you know uh, things like that right now both take engineering approach both rely heavily on automation uh, both you know uh, add a lot of value by uh, setting up uh, the tooling and the practices and uh, you know helping developers or working with developers both team uh, typically work or have some interface to uh, the development teams and so on right so uh, there are a lot of uh, both uh, you know set up mon monitoring systems what we call as observability systems including let's say uh, monitoring tools uh, it could be you know uh, the log management systems it could be distributed tracing and so on so both teams are responsible for uh, you know the overall infrastructure management um, you know the se tool setup and also helping developers to speed up the development and so on. In fact, the helping developers part where the continuous integration comes in a lot um, is where DevOps has certain advantage. I mean, DevOps engineers are more responsible for those kind of things, right? Because uh, if you look at site reliability engineers, they are mostly uh, managing the production infrastructure, right? Now, that's where also the difference between the site reliability engineers and DevOps engineers starts, right? Because if you talk about site reliability engineering, we are talking about a site. What kind of a site typically a high you know high traffic uh, production infrastructure you know sites like it was created by google so google's infrastructure for example the search engine youtube right so these are high traffic sites um you know uh, so site reliability engineers typically work on a production infrastructures whereas devops engineers not necessarily i've been a devops consultant and i helped a lot of organizations set up their devops practices implement the automation tools build their pipelines and that was it i was never on call I was not managing the production infrastructure when I was doing the DevOps job. When I was, you know, operations engineer, I was doing all of that. But uh, when I moved myself to DevOps consulting position, I was mostly adding value to the software delivery process rather than managing the production infrastructure. Now, first is you're managing a site, high traffic site typically, when you're a site reliability engineer. Second is you are talking about on-call support as well because site reliability engineers essentially need to be on-call as well. Whereas DevOps engineers, they don't have to be, right? So that's the second difference. The third difference is you're talking about a high traffic site. So you have to talk about a lot about, you know, performance, optimization, uh, you know, uh, the scalability. So you're, you know, a site reliability engineer has to, has to know about all of these things, how to, how to design a high traffic infrastructure uh, or how to design an infrastructure to scale. How do you, um, you know, 
take care of the performance issues how do you optimize things like you know applications databases things like that uh, you'll work a lot on performance actually you'd work a lot on optimization if you're a site reliability engineer right so those are the things that um, come under the site reliability engineers purview whereas devops engineers you know you can be focused on just automation for example a site reliability engineer essentially has to be on call has to manage a production infrastructure has to work on performance optimization uh, and so on uh, both teams do monitoring um, you know uh, or set up monitoring tools but um, you know uh, site reliability SREs always uh, are using the monitoring tools uh, they are the first level um, you know um, interface for any issues any incident response all of that comes into the SREs purview uh, SREs also have to um, talk you know know about the concepts such as SLIs, SLOs, SLAs because uh, again those concepts were introduced by Google but a lot of other organizations are now implementing it. Uh, SL, SLAs are the client facing but internally you have this service level indicators using monitoring tools and uh, SLIs internally uh, you know if you are talking about a 99 0.99 uh, percent of uh, uptime your SLO uh, or uh, you know or 99.95 percent of uh, um, you know uptime for the client your SLOs are even stricter right so you have to work within those SLOs which are like internal you have your site has to be available for 99.99 percentage of time and so on right so site reliability engineers need to know uh, a lot more um, uh, apart from the automating stuff that DevOps do and um, you know setting up the CI CD pipelines and so on and so forth right and uh, those are some of the differences or additional responsibilities of SREs now how do you really look at this SREs DevOps and then you have operations engineers and system administrators and all that right so the way I would categorize this and this is my own uh, categorization is um, I would put them in three different categories right so the first level is the system administrators operations engineers uh, they're the ones who manage infrastructure a lot of times manually uh, they do a lot of uh, ad hoc tasks they do a lot of uh, monitoring uh, they are spending a lot of time debugging troubleshooting rather than you know um, doing automation work and so on right that's the first level uh, the system admins you know operations engineers even some of the um, you know system engineers or you know network engineers uh, support personnel they're all uh, the first level category um, the second is the DevOps where you know these are the peoples who uh, gain acquire skills mostly in automation uh, the five principles of uh, you know, pil pillars of DevOps I would call it as revision control uh, revision not revision control but cloud uh, infrastructure as a code CICD uh, observability containers so uh, DevOps engineers are the ones who are equipped they're the operations people but they're equipped with these five you know new additional skills and uh, they are the ones who automate stuff they are the ones who set up pipelines they are the ones who uh, speed up the software delivery pipeline and the third level on top of that the cherry on top is the site reliability engineers or SREs they are these are the really really experienced people who have been you know doing all of these things that DevOps engineers do for a while so they have knowledge of building managing infrastructures a while they've seen a bunch of performance issues they have gone through those they have you know probably done the release management release engineering and so on uh, they probably have managed the production infrastructures as well and they are the ones who are you know highly skilled the elite group of operations people who uh, manage the production infrastructure talk about the SLAs SLOs uh, they are the ones who you know um, uh, optimize things they uh, know about performance issues uh, or they know how to optimize performances and all that they know how to analyze and take some you know uh, manage the incident response they're on call and they also take the engineering approach so they go back look at the incidents and see how to solve them so that whatever they're doing uh, manually this year is automated next right so that's the that's how I would categorize the operations DevOps and SREs right so it's a step by step and that if you really look at it and think about it um, it makes a lot of sense at least to me it does right from uh, what I've seen um, you know uh, about SREs and uh, DevOps and so on right in fact uh, I'm gonna write about how I came to know about um, you know analyze these differences and uh, uh, because I used to think until last year that SREs and DevOps are the same 
DevOps engineers and SREs are. But until I went to a SRE conference in uh, Singapore and I attended it for a couple of days and that's when I it struck to me, oh, these are the real differences between SREs and uh, DevOps. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to write a story on it uh, pretty soon. Well, those are my thoughts about DevOps engineers versus SREs. What do you think about this? Do you agree on that? Does that resonate with you? Uh, or do you have any thoughts that I missed out on or any points that I missed bit the you know the difference between the DevOps and, S, uh, DevOps and SRE? Also, what do you think about the categorization? I'm definitely uh, would like to know about your thoughts on it. So do comment below. And if this message resonated with you, uh, if this made sense to you, if you like this content, uh, definitely consider subscribing to the Facebook group or being part of the my private Facebook group where I post uh, these kind of content, provide uh, my thoughts, uh, techniques, tools, and everything about DevOps and SRE in general. Uh, you could also consider my course, uh, a free course, which is published on edX uh, by Linux Foundation. I have authored a couple of courses for Linux Foundation. One of that is published um, on edX. It's by name, Introduction to Site Reliability Engineering and DevOps. So if you, uh, and it's a free course available, so you should definitely go and check that out as well. I'm also coming up with a new course, a new program rather, a three level program, um, which takes you through the entire journey. And if you go through that program, you can make a career as a DevOps engineer, not a SRE, but as a DevOps engineer for sure. And uh, that's the program I'm coming up with. So if you want to know about that, I'm going to start conducting some webinars. So if you want to stay up to date about that as well, do make sure you're part of the Facebook group that I've pasted uh, in the link below, right? Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, thanks a lot for watching this and I'll see you in another one.